We know that time is different near a black hole, but what really happens? We'll check out time beyond our regular experience. Put them together to see what happens. And if you stick around to the end, you'll understand what is a singularity. Let's start with empty space and a spherical spaceship. Well, not completely empty. Let's add some distant stars. Ah, so much better. In such an environment, things work simply. If you apply a force to a body, it will accelerate in a straight line. And since there is no air to slow it down, it will continue to move in a straight line after the engine turns off. This grid is a representation of space-time. More on this later. For now, think of it as a guide showing you how you will be affected when in a particular area. In normal space, you will keep moving in straight lines, just like these ball bearings. But what if there's a star nearby? A star is a lot of mass and distorts space-time. The bigger the body, the greater the distortion. When we approach such an object, our ship follows the distortion, curving towards the object and our captain needs to do an engine burn to get back on course. When a big star dies, it implodes and compresses the central mass into an infinitesimal point, leaving only the space-time distortion like this, the black hole. Now let's talk about time before we get to see what happens with time near a black hole. For most of history, we believe time ticked at the same rate for everyone, everywhere. Nope, that's not how it works. There is no universal time. Time depends on where you are and how fast you're moving. Why? Einstein figured this out with two thought experiments. As a young man, he worked at the Swiss patent office, evaluating submissions including clock mechanisms that were very popular at the turn of the century. One day while commuting home on the tram, the large clock in the city square caught Albert's attention. As the tram was moving away from the clock, he wondered what he would see if he was riding a beam of light. He imagined his wife Maleva was standing in front of the clock tower and a big blue dot jumped back and forth between the 6 and the 12 on the face. Einstein would observe the same motion from the tram moving away from the clock tower as a red dot. Because the red dot is moving up and down and left to right, it's traveled farther. Speed is distance divided by time. And since the speed of light is constant everywhere, the distance divided by time for the red dot will be equal to the same ratio for the blue dot. Now let's rearrange the equation, and for simplicity, let's say the red distance is twice the blue one. The red clock then must take twice as long as the blue clock. Both are seeing the same event, but time is different for each of them because one of them is moving. Time has slowed down. This inspiration, plus a lot of math, became Einstein's theory of special relativity. The second thought experiment was an imaginary elevator. If you were in an elevator with no windows, you could not tell if the elevator was a normal elevator on Earth or one in outer space accelerating at the rate of Earth's gravity. In other words, objects in a strong gravitational field experience slowing of time as if they were moving very fast. So where you are makes a difference on what time you experience. Does this really happen? Yeah. back to space-time. The black hole is coming soon, hang in there. You can look at any motion as a collection of frames or moments in time. Each snapshot represents all three dimensions of space for the entire universe. All of these frames combined together make up space-time. If you move from the back to the front of the snapshots, you're traveling forward in time from the Big Bang to today. As we've seen, the three dimensions of space and one of time are interchangeable. Mileva's world has different time and space compared to Albert's, because Albert is moving fast. Imagine we're in the far future, and we are launching our very first expedition to visit a black hole. A reporter watches the ship's progress. Initially, Earth time and ship time are synchronized, but as we approach the black hole, space time is distorted. 
The distance light has to travel is greater for the traveler in the distortion compared to an observer outside the distortion. As seen from Earth, the apparent direct path of the ship is much shorter compared to the astronaut's elongated path as shown by the space-time lines. The speed of light is constant, so time has slowed down for the astronaut as seen by the reporter. Time keeps getting slower as the astronaut gets closer to the event horizon. The event horizon is a boundary around the black hole beyond which no light or other radiation can escape. Once he reaches the event horizon, the astronaut would appear frozen to the reporter. Time has stopped for him. This is because any physical signal will get infinitely stretched at the event horizon, thus never reaching the outside observer. But from his point of view, the astronaut would continue moving in normal time to the center of the black hole where he would reach a singularity. A singularity in physics is a point in space-time where the laws of physics break down. The known equations no longer apply. Density and gravity become infinite. A good illustration of this is the equation y equals 1 over x, where x equals 1, y equals 1. For x equals 2, y is 1 half. If we double x again, we half y again. And we can do this forever. x goes to infinity. If our astronaut could survive spaghettification when he reached the center of the black hole, he would cease to exist. At least in this universe. Nothing inside a black hole can ever communicate with our universe, even in principle. Could you visit a younger you in an alternate universe? Click here to find out.